Welcome back to another video. I'm Dollywop, and today we're continuing my Anime Teams Redone series. If you haven't watched my first two videos where I take on Ash's teams, I recommend doing so for a bit of context. However, it isn't required to properly enjoy this video, though I do have a few spoilers for these episodes here, so be warned. Now, in my Ash videos, I started off with a concept that I can't use any Pokemon Ash has caught before. I will not be following that rules for these teams. Now, don't get me wrong. I tried making the teams with that rule in place, However, some of these trainers need the Pokemon they already have. Take the Sun and Moon crew, for example. Yahweh uses almost every fire type from Alola. Without being able to use any of his original team members, I'd have literally nothing to give him. So rather than sticking to the concept, I'll be doing my best to give a mix of the original Pokemon that are needed for their teams, along with new Pokemon I think fit them. If it comes down to it and I have an original Pokemon and a new Pokemon that fill a similar role, I'll defer to the change, as that's more interesting. If that seems a bit confusing, you'll understand as we go. Also, I'll be giving everyone a team of six Pokemon. Do I think they should have a full team of six in the show? No. A lot of them don't need that, while some do. But if I have six slots to work with, why not make use of it? Another way to keep this video different and interesting. I won't be doing moves like I did for Ash, as I have way too many people to go, and this script is 14 pages in total, so we gotta be quick. Enough explanation though, I think you guys understand what I'm saying. Let's go! We're starting in Kanto with Brock. Brock's Kanto team will be Geodude, Onyx, Vulpix, Charmeleon, Cubone and Kangaskhan. We have the usual suspects in Geodude, Onyx, and Vulpix, but the last three are new. I got rid of Golbat as I needed room, and it wasn't that important for Brock's team. Charmeleon might seem familiar, as it's actually Ash's Charizard from the original timeline. Instead of Ash going for it, Brock's gonna take in his place as someone needs to save Charmander. Seeing as Brock's not focused on training, he doesn't have to worry about it not listening to him. Even if he was, Brock's a gym leader, so I can't imagine Charmander disobeying. Still, Charmander was a fighter at heart, so while he won't fully evolve, I think he'd at least get to Charmeleon under Brock's care. Cubone is sort of Brock's first intro to baby Pokemon. I think it fits Brock's vibe and team like a glove. It'll be a fresh Cubone having lost its mother and latching onto Brock. Following that, we have Kangaskhan. I think Kangaskhan will be one that has lost its child and befriended Brock. They're both kind and nurturing people, so I think Kangaskhan is the perfect Pokemon to help Brock keep everyone fed and on track. It will especially love to care for Charmeleon and Cubone, hearkening back to the theories of both Pokemon being related to it. Misty's up next, and her team is going to be Starmie, Gyarados, Squirtle, Poliwhirl, Lapras, and Togepi. Starmie is just better Staryu, so why have both? Poliwhirl and Togepi were also staples of her team, so they get to stay. If we get back at Ash for taking her Psyduck, I've given her both his Squirtle and Lapras. I think Lapras will actually stay with Misty, having bonded with her on a deeper level. Squirtle will still become a firefighter, only his squad will be based in Cerulean City, which I think is fitting. Gym leaders help their towns, so one of their Pokemon being the head firefighter works. Gyarados is a Pokemon Misty had, but I've got some story for it now. Goldeen is gone, so instead Misty's gonna have this Magikarp originally. She's not gonna treat it well and find it useless. She thinks it's a nuisance at best, as it randomly pops out of its ball all the time. However, during the SSN incident, it will evolve into a Gyarados and get them to safety. Afterwards, though, it goes on a rampage whenever it's released. This will be Misty's arc in Kanto, as she tries to soothe Gyarados' rage. Rather than it not listening due to a lack of experience like with Magmar and Ash, Gyarados holds on to the mean words that she said to it as a Magikarp. Misty's gonna learn that she has to atone for her cruelty and work hard to get Gyarados' forgiveness. Eventually, they reconcile, and it becomes her powerhouse. I thought of this as a way to give Misty something to do in Kanto. Brock's got his new thing with Charmeleon, Cubone, and Kangaskhan, so this will be Misty's side story. On to Johto, and we're- ah, oh, fuck, I forgot Tracy. Yeah, Tracy will have Meryl, Scyther, Venomoth, Smeargle, Porygon, and Sunkern. I'll just evolve his Venonaut, because it did in the anime, so why not? Then we give him a Porygon, because maybe it can help with him with his art or something? Angles? I don't know. Sunkern is just future Johto representation. There's not a lot to this, but there's not a lot to Tracy either. Miracle was the only one that had a good reason to be given to him. Now, on to Johto. Oh look, we're back at Brock. Who would have seen this coming? Brock's Johto team is Steelix, Vulpix, Marowak, Charmeleon, Fortress, and Fampy. Vulpix and Marowak will sort of be the Pokemon I continue to have travel with Brock. Both are representations of his goal of being a breeder, with Marowak representing his care of baby Pokemon, while Vulpix shows off the beauty that comes with taking care of him. Cubone evolving into Marowak shows it off it finally growing into its own under Brock's care and leaving that role as the baby so others can now take its place. I like Fortress, so he sticks around, and I considered having Charmeleon leave the party to go to the Charisific Valley, but I think it would calm down around Brock and just like being a part of the team. Onyx will evolve to Steelix and Johto, showing off the new Steel type, just like I had Houndoom do for Ash with the Dark type. That's a reason I didn't try and give Ash a Steel type on his team, because I knew I had Brock here for that representation. Vampy just seems like a good Pokemon to throw on Brock's team. I was looking for a good Rock type to fill this role, as he is the Rock type gym leader, but the only option was the Tyranitar line. I didn't want to give him the baby that they had to take to Mount Silver, as I liked his relationship with Ash more. So I gave him Vampy as a ground type is the next best thing. Misty's Johto team is Garrett. Gyarados, Politoed, Croconaw, Corsola, Chinchou, and Togetic. Gyarados is her ace now, so he's coming along. Politoed and Togetic get their promised evolutions. Also, Togetic is staying, because it leaving was dumb. 
That episode was a fever dream, I swear to God. I can't... What What was that Mirage episode? All I remember from that episode is that the guy had a Shedinja that was really cool. Corsola stays as it was a great Pokemon for Misty. To add to it, she's getting Ash's Totodile and a Chinchou. Chinchou is a unique water type that Misty would die to have on her team. If she's trying to become a water type master, that is a great Pokemon to have. Totodile she catches instead of Ash and will evolve in the Whirl Islands to help her achieve victory there. With Misty's help to focus it, I think Totodile just does better on her team as it didn't do much for Ash. Plus, she's missing that Goofymon now that Psyduck's gone, so Totodile can fill that role. Ho in time, and we are back to Brock. His team is Ninetales, Marowak, Lombre, Aeron, Spinda, and Bonsly. Full picks will evolve to Ninetales here, once again signifying Brock's growing as a breeder. Marowak has to come along, and Lombre and Bonsly are still kicking in his party. I did revert his Ludicolo to a Lombre though, as I liked its personality better as a low tide and Lombre more than a Ludicolo. Brock's still a rock type gym leader, so Pokemon like Aeron would be great for him. Its diet of eating metal would be an interesting thing for him to learn about as a breeder. Spinda is an odd choice, but let me explain. I got the idea while rewatching the anime. During the Spinda debut episode, the gang is helping a girl try and capture the Spinda with a heart on it. Brock is trying to impress the girl, but always ends up encountering this Spinda with a broken heart mark on it. I think it would be funny for it to be Brock's sidekick for the region. It appears every time he gets his heart broken to signify his defeat, as Max pulls him away from whatever woman he's addressing. Next, we have May. May's team is Blaziken, Masquerain, Delcaddy, Metatite, Munchlax, and Altaria. I think her Skitty should have evolved in the Battle Frontier to show her growth as a coordinator. In Hoenn, she was still new and inexperienced, even in her later contests. The Battle Frontier is where her skills really picked up, so that's the best place for it to happen. I like Munchlax, so he gets to stick around. May having a Pokemon that doesn't fit the usual contest vibes is great. Now before we get into the newcomers, I'd like to explain the loss of Bulbasaur and Squirtle, as they are technically the first major casualties on this list. I don't count Brock's Crobat. I love it, but it was never something I considered integral to Brock. If you do, great, but it's no Krogunk or Blissey. Anyways, I love Bulbasaur and it pained me to take it off the list. I just think a full Hoenn team is cooler. Besides, he got sidelined for the Kanto remake rep in Squirtle, which was dumb. You already have the remake rep, she doesn't need two Kanto starters. Taking both away does do some good for May. Both have big problems performing, whether it be because they couldn't pay attention or fear. I think that set May back a lot in her career. These new choices will better help her progress and continue to advance. She wouldn't win the Grand Festival, but she'd place high. On a big note, taking away Squirtle does lead to actual issues. He is integral to the fusion of fire and water. Well, one of our picks here fixes that. Masquerade replaced Beautifly, and this is the first instance of me having two Pokemon that both work, but deferring to the change. Like Wormple, Masquerade can be encountered early on as a surge kit, but it does have access to water moves. That means May can still do the fusion of fire and water with it in Blaziken. I think that's even better than using Squirtle as she'll achieve a powerful combo with the literal first two Pokemon she's ever owned. Surge Kid is also my favorite Pokemon, so I'm extremely biased. I mean, just listen to this clip. Ah. 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 Yeah, Surge Kid's the best. I know Drew had one, but simply give him Beautify in that case. Thinking about that, I might do a contest rivals video for their full teams. If you all are interested. That won't be for a bit though, I got plenty to get through before that. Anyway, Surskin would be like her Beautifly, in that she uses it the most early on. Side note, it is weird she never used Torchic for any contest until it evolved. I might be wrong, but I'm like 90% sure she didn't use Torchic at all. Surskip would definitely do better than Beautifly in my opinion, as moves like Bubble Beam, Psy Beam, and Ice Beam are all available to it to create awesome combinations. It would actually prove to be May's first hurdle, as when it evolves, she has to think differently on how to use it in contests. Of all of May's Pokemon, Surskip is one that becomes biologically different upon evolution. Her next hurdle, or even one that goes on at the same time, would be Metatite. I think Metatite proves to be a challenge for May, in a way that's not like Squirtle or Bulbasaur. Metatite would be a very zen Pokemon, and May has a hard time bonding with it. Its physical skills and psychic abilities would be hard for her to mesh, and she'd have to really work hard to find combinations that show off both. However, once she does, she'll have a fantastic contest Pokemon on her hands. Alright, I will say part of the reason I gave her Metatite is that if she ever came back post Kalos, it would have evolved and she could Mega Evolve it for the contests. I know she could do the same thing with Blaziken or Altaria, but I think Metatite would benefit the most from it. Also, Mega Evolving Altaria would feel cliche. Plus, it, it just doesn't really need it. Speaking of, Altaria is the perfect contest Pokemon and I really tried not to use it. I've seen it on so many lists before, so I really wanted to see if I can do something different than it. I almost considered Milotic, but Milotic appears so much and Altaria just fits May better. At the end of the day, it's just a great choice for her. I don't even need to create a moment for it to join her, as the anime already did that and squandered it. In the episode True Blue Swablu, she nurses one back to health and offers it to join her team, but its flock showed up and it rejoins them instead. Like, okay. 
cool. We're just gonna, oh, perfect May Pokemon right there. Ah, no, no, don't worry. Other Swablu showed up. I'm just gonna go hang with them. No, but I can't become a contest star, May. Peace. Sorry, I watched that episode recently, and that's how I figured this out, and I was kind of salty about it. Swablu, I think, would evolve closer to the Grand Festival in Hoenn. It would give May an extra oomph, but wouldn't be enough to help her win the entire thing. Max! Wait, Max? Yeah, Max! The anime is so dumb for not giving him and Bonnie Pokemon. I understand you can't be a trainer until you're 10, but literally we've seen cases of people younger than them having Pokemon. So screw the rules because the anime already broke them. They won't be actively training anyways, just caring for them. I won't give him or Bonnie teams a six though, I'm giving them each three Pokemon. Because they're young and technically not supposed to have Pokemon in the first place, three just seems like a manageable number. Like with everyone having a team of six, you don't need to think about it as, oh, they're gonna have three Pokemon in the anime. It's sort of like, these are the three best options for them to care for in the anime. Max's three are Beldum, Ralts, and Slackoth. Ralts is an easy choice with his episode of the anime. Beldum was actually inspired to the relationship Max had with Mr. Stone and Steven. I think after delivering the letter from Mr. Stone, Steven would gift him one to take care of. Blackoth is there to represent the love and admiration Max has for his dad, Norman. We're off to Sinnoh, and oh gee, look, it's Brock again. Ninedales, Marowak, Pseudo-Wudo, Shieldon, Krogunk, and Blissey. I don't need to explain any of these guys except for Shieldon. It's sort of the same thought process I had for Aeron and Hoenn. Only well, this time I think it's better because Ash has its counterpart in Cranidos, so you got that going for you. And as a breeder, giving Brock the chance to study and care for a Fossilmon would be something he'd love. Dawn's turn, Piplup, Hachirisu, Lopunny, Sherum, Cyndaquil, and Glaceon. I hate this team. Not actually, but more because it all fits so well, so I don't have a lot of alternatives to choose from. It's sort of an instance where they really gave her the perfect team in the anime. I was able to take out Mamoswine, and I gave her Glaceon to parallel Zoe's Leafeon, and kept Cyndaquil to do the fire and ice combo. There's no other good fire type out there for Dawn, so Cyndaquil stays. Baneri evolves into Lopunny to give her team some more power. Taking a page out of Enter the Unknown's book, I think Baneri will be the Pokemon Ash will trade Dawn for her Shellos. Ash will catch it first before Dawn, and they'll go through the Buizel Apom situation and end up trading. That's the best way to keep the trading situation in, otherwise you can just toss it away. Cherim has a lot going for it here. One, I think it shows off Dawn's growth and her growing confidence as a coordinator, with its ability to hide in its petals but turning into a beautiful flower in the sun. It's sort of a representation of Dawn being in the spotlight and growing. It also doubles as a reference to one of my favorite Pokemon manga characters, Platinum, who also had a Cherim herself and is Dawn's counterpart. I will say, with this team, I think Dawn would win her Grand Festival. I already thought she should've, and I know why they didn't. It would've been weird for Ash to lose in Sinnoh, but Dawn to win it. Which means if Ash would win, then Dawn could as well. Hmm? Anyways, her team is more refined here, and I think Lopunny, Cherim, and Glaceon would prove to be enough to boost her to victory. Against Zoe's Glamio and Glade, I think she'd match it with Piplup and Lopunny. Being her first two Pokemon, and with Lopunny's boost from evolution, they'd win, but it would be just as narrow as it was then. Unova's here, and finally we're not starting on Brock! Iris' team is gonna be Drudigan, Fracture, Hydreigon, Archon, Laron, and Shiny Gibble. Iris' original team just makes you scream why to the heavens. Why is her original teammate in Excadrill of all things? Drudigan is the much better choice as she's trying to become a Dragon Master. She's depicted with one in Generations and other media, so why not make it her first team member? Why give her a Dragonite when Hydreigon is right there? Literally, it's a dark dragon that's hard to control. It does what Dragonite does, but better. It is also the perfect way to start seeding in Iris' ability to read the hearts of dragon types. Amolga's gone. Fuck Amolga. Why was it even here? I'm gonna have Axe evolve into Fracture 70% into Unova so it can finally become tolerable. The last three are references to her championship team in the games. They'll get their unevolved forms early here so when she has her full team for the Masters 8, it makes sense. I made the Gibble shiny as a reference to the shiny Gibble you can get in the games. Oh yeah, and for my Masters 8, all champion battles would be full 6 on 6s. Maybe I'll do a short video on those teams in the future. I just want to preference this and say I do love Iris. It may seem like I'm throwing shade her way, but it's more the writers for giving her such a weird team. She's great, especially as a champion. Champion, so don't be throwing any disrespect on her name. I even like her better than Misty. I actually might get hate for that, but I'm going off track. Um, anyways, no hate in the comments. Okay, this is a very last minute thing I'm doing here. That's why it sounds a bit more off the cuff because I have no script written for this part. So Silent. Originally, I just gave him an all grass type team because there was enough grass types in Unova. But then I was like, I'm kind of doing a disservice to everyone who likes Silent because there are stuff about him I could do to his team. So that's why his team's gonna be Pansage, Levani, Ferroseed, Jumpluff, LGM, and Electric. Ferroseed and Jumpluff are just references to grass type Pokemon, and I think he's had them on his team. I think they'd be good additions. Levani replaces Crustle, because if you're gonna give him a bug type, give him a grass bug type, especially if Ash isn't gonna get it. I loved Crustle though, so don't get me wrong, I'm a big bug type fan, but I'm also a grass type fan, so it kind of balances out. LGM I did to represent his love of UFOs and science and logic and all that stuff. I thought it'd be a good pick. 
And Electric is sort of going to represent his little fishing goals because he does leave the end of Unova, I think, to go fishing. I think that's what they did. Jeez, Unova, god damn it. If I'm right, goddamn Unova, what the hell? But anyways, I thought it'd be cooler than like a Basculin or a Stunfisk. I think Electric is just like enough on that border where it's like a good Pokemon for him to have. Because especially because it deals with flying types for him. But it's also not like overpowered in the sense where I feel like, okay, I just gave him like a super strong Pokemon for no reason. Anyways, those that's Silence Team and his references. This is all recorded off the cuff last minute, so that, that shows you how much I really give a shit about Silent. Silent. Though I did I did do enough to uh to go back and do this. So give me some credit on that part. But yeah, I'm not I'm not the biggest Silent fan of the world. But I wanted to give, do him justice for the people out there who did that, who did like him, you know. Not enough to actually write an addition to the script though. Anyways, let's go to Kalos. Kalos, baby! Serena's team was one of the earliest I thought of, or at least the one with the first edition. Braxian, Hancham, Sylveon, Meowstic Female, Floet, Eternal Flower, and Mega Absol. She keeps her original team, and I give her some heat to fill out the rest. Serena's a trainer I thought deserved a full team, just like May and Dawn. I gave my ideas for Meowstic in the Ash video. I think it'll be the opposite of Serena on personality, having a crush on Ash's Meowstic, but being more direct and outgoing about it. Floet Eternal Flower is a shocker. I thought it could be an interesting storyline idea to involve it. It was always weird to me how Chespi was the power source for the giant rock Zygarde. Like, I understand why they wrote it that way, but Chespi of all things was powering it. Even with the laboratory experiment, it seems weird. And on another note, I don't like in X and Y that I have to do homework to actually figure out the plot at the end there. Like, if you didn't watch the Mega Evolution specials, you wouldn't know anything about Chespi, you wouldn't do anything about Alon. Like, in my version, I think Team Flare would be after Eternal Flower Fluet. They discovered it was a massive source of unlimited power and wanted to use it for their schemes. It meets with Ash and the gang and ends up being saved by Serena. It joins them and that's all she wrote. Fluet joining them actually leads into the next pick here. Mega Absol is mind-blowing, but I think if you're going to have a gen where Pokemon can Mega Evolve, let's have Ash and his companions learn and utilize it. I mean, Ash already has Ash Chestnut in this scenario, but I mean the other two. I used Mega Absol to do the rival in X and Y using one. The other one I thought of was Mega Mawile, but I didn't think it added anything new to to the team that Floet and Sylveon didn't already contribute. I think Absol meets them because it can sense the disaster that will occur around Floet. It joins them to try and prevent Floet's eventual capture by Team Flare, because to get to the ending with a rock monster, they will actually end up capturing Floet during Ash's League match versus Alon. This gives Serena a big spotlight at the end, as this is her Pokemon on the line. Like, Alon's great, but I don't need, he doesn't really need to have any direct ties to this rock monster. Serena will learn Mega Evolution before Final Showcase. They'd go back and Karina and Gherkin would help her learn. I think they'd double back there to try and figure out the Bond phenomenon that Ash and Chestnut have. It's such a weird thing that I think they want to get opinions from the experts on Mega Evolution, because it almost seems like a Mega Evolution to them. That's when Gherkin notices Serena and her Absol's bond and gives her the opportunity. They would eventually master it and uses it to help everyone save Eternal Flower Floet. Ash would still have the star moment at the end there. I'm just giving Serena more stuff to do. Flamont's team is what you expect. Heliosk, Mega Manetric, Magneton, Laffy, Raichu, and Rotom. Get Luxray out of there. This is the gen that introduced Megas, and Clemont's getting one. Mega Manetric is right there. Flaffy's a reference to Clemont's dad's Ampharos. Rotom is a perfect Pokemon for an electric type using Inventor, and Raichu is funny to have because Ash has Pikachu. I think they'd have a rivalry with each other, which would lead to comedy. Bonnie's team is simple. Dende, Dedene, Dende, uh, Dedene, Irantrum, and Marie. Instead of Clement holding on to it, she gets to capture Dedene. She bonded with that Tyrandrum in the anime and she get to keep it because that episode was great. Marie is just a reference to her dad just like Clement's Flaffy. He will still get squishy, don't get me wrong. I just don't think it counts as an official team member. I mean, it probably does. It, I, you can. I just wanted to get Mareep on the team as it was a reference to her dad and I gave Clement the Flaffy, so I thought it was all, oh, this would look cool. So just, squishy is still part of the team, that's my point. Alola time, and god why are there so many companions here? For the Alola crew, I only give them five. I didn't really have a lot to add to them, so getting their teams to five was hard enough in some cases. Six would just be choosing something that fits their type for the sake of a slot. So rather than giving them the six mon, I'll be giving each two Z moves that they'll have access to. Yahweh kicks it off with Turtonator, Charizard, Alolan Marowak, Magmar, and Toracat. I added on Toracat as without Ash having a Litten, I think Kiawe would give it the representation it needs. Incineroar is shown off a lot by Kukui, so I just keep it as a Toracat. I don't think this is Ash's though, as I take away its entire backstory to give it to Salazzle, so it's just a random Litten he catches. Magmar is a Pokemon he gave away in the game to another NPC, so I just gave him one as a reference to that. Yahweh has Fyrenium Z and Flyenium Z. 
I might really just butcher all these C moves. I did not double check how they're said. Lana's team's next with Primarina, Wishy Washy, Vaporeon, Lapras, and Chin Chow. Without a Raquinid, the only other Alolan water type to give her is Wishy Washy, which also references the totem Pokemon. Why they gave her EV and didn't involve it into Vaporeon, I'll never know. Lapras would be a ride Pokemon, sort of like Charizard and Kyawe, and Chin Chow is just a good water type for her all around. She used a Lantern in her game team, but I keep it as a Chin Chow so she can use it more on land. I don't want too many just Pokemon that are restricted straight to the water. She'll be using Primarinium Z and Waterium Z. Malu's team is going to be Serena, Fomantis, Shenotic, Phantom, and Rowlet. Shaman's gone, because I hate trainers owning legendaries or some mythicals. I could give a dissertation on specifically why I think some mythicals are okay to use based on the definition of mythicals, but that's not for this video. Really, I just think it takes away the magic of them when anyone can just catch one. I also hate having multiples of legendaries, but that's in another conversation altogether. Let's just say the Rivals video is going to be interesting. Shaman also didn't do much, so just get rid of it. Anyways, Fomanta should have been added to Malice team because it's also a great grass type for her. Chinotic is there to reference her trial in the game. Phantom's sort of a reverse reference. A dead kid possesses a tree stump to make Phantom. It's kind of a reference to her dead mom, not really, but I just like the connection to thinking of a dead person possessing wood. Rowlet is Ash's Rowlet this time around. If Ash isn't catching it, I think Malo should have it. Why waste a god? It's also so I can have the Water Trainer, Fire Trainer, and Grass Trainer each have a starter, and they're all at different levels. I think that just looks cool. Her Z moves are Grassium Z and Phytinium Z. Phytinium is due to her Serena. There's not really another secondary one I really want to give her. Sophocles, yay. Does anyone really care about this guy? Okay, okay. Vikavolt, Togedemaru, Alolan Geodude, Elekid, and Magnemite. Alolan Geodude is the only good Alolan Electric type to give him. Elekid could be helpful with his inventing as it windmills its arms to generate power for Sophocles' gadgets. Magnemite actually gave as a reference to his brother who uses Steel types. He'll have Beginium Z and Electrium Z. Helium Z probably works better than the Beginium Z, but I like bug types. Last but certainly not least, Lily. Her team will be Alolan Ninetales, Alolan Sandshrew, Leferi, Rabombi, and Espeon. Bullpix should have evolved as a sign of growth. Enough said. Sandrew is the same one from her challenge, which helped her out. I think it would have gone with her after she gets her Iceum Z. But Fairy is her favorite Pokemon, and she has one in game, so boom, team member. Lily doesn't have a set type, but if I had to give her one, I'd make it Ice and Fairy to represent the Alolan Ninetales her Vulpix could evolve into. That's why I think Rabombi would be a great fairy to add to her team. It just fits Lily's vibe. Last but not least is Espeon. I think it symbolizes her relationship with her brother Gladian, who has an Umbreon. I think he'd give it to her after she finally got over her phobia. She'd be using Iceum Z and Ferium Z. Is that how you pronounce them? God, I hate these Z-move names. They're so weird to pronounce. I'm like sitting over here going every light. I'm like, am I saying this right? Uh, maybe it's right. Uh, I Am I going to double check it? No, no, I'm just going to say it like this because are you guys really, if you on to journeys and we have go, I want to give them a proper team of six. I made it have two requirements. One, it has to be a full Galar team with no proper Galar anime. Galar needs some proper representation. That will be Go's job as he slowly catches Pokemon. His main team will eventually be filled up by certain Galarmon that stand out. How they stand out is my second requirement. It should be good for catching Pokemon, in an anime sense at least. His entire team should be useful in his goal to capture not only Pokemon, but Mew. So with these two requirements, he'll have a team of Cinderace, Corviknight, Lapple, Indeedee, Boltund, and Urshifu Single Strike. Corviknight will be his flying mount in his eyes in the sky. With a steel body to resist most types, it can tank a lot and fall things from the air. Lapple is a dragon type that can spit acid. Its signature move, Grav Apple, lowers defense, which will be useful in wearing down foes. Indeedee knows a myriad of support moves on top of having Psychic Surge set up Psychic Terrain. With that setup, not many things will take an expanding force from it. Boltund is the ultimate dog for tracking, pursuing, attacking, and paralyzing any Pokemon Go is after. Who wouldn't want it? Urshifu's single strike fills out the role of the damage dealer along with Cinderace. I know I said I hated giving people legendaries, but Urshifu is one of those that is said to be legendary, but eh? I mean, what does he represent as a legendary? These hands? I personally feel like legendary should have intrinsic ties to the world, otherwise you're just a rare Pokemon. So in that case, you can be caught because he doesn't really count as being that special. Anyways, its dark type is important for the team because the Pokemon Go wants to catch more than anything else is Mew. Having his strongest fighter be immune to Mew's psychic power would be great. Overall, Go's team is there to help in his tracking, fighting, and pursuit of Pokemon. That's all the teams. What did you think? Some of these I'm more proud of than others, but overall I think it went well. These are all in the context of my Ash Team Redone universe, so I think they fit appropriately. Next video, we'll be exploring Ash's rivals in this universe, which is going to be fun. If you have any ideas for what if videos beyond this series, let me know. Once I get my fill of these Team Redone videos, I'll expand more outward on ideas. I'm trying to do as many ideas as I can before I eventually redo the entire gym systems in Elite Four. Subscribe and I'll see you later.